Hello, everyone, and welcome to a local chat. It's a podcast hosted by me, Will Crosby. Today is the date on my computer, July 8th, 2021, episode 27. Joining me, as always, is a man who thinks squirrels like nuts. It's Ian Gibson. They're always carrying them. They've always got at least two on them. (laughs) Unless they're female. (laughs) (laughs) Also joining us. You think. You think. It's David. Uh... (laughs) <laughs> I mean, like the squirrels, I also have two nuts. I don't know. <laughs> I don't oh, boy. From that intro. <laughs> I'm so sorry, everyone. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, hello. Oh. Hi. How are you? How's everyone doing? We're doing great. Thank you. Um, it's it, it got hot in this room. It always gets hot in this room, and I beg for relief, but doesn't come Uh, um, let's move on let's move move on on. (laughs) it has been a a week i feel like it's been like two weeks um just to preface this podcast off ian came up to visit over the weekend and we did a bunch of streaming on saturday with chris and karen Mm -hmm. and then sunday we walked all through new york city and my body hurt a lot after doing all of that um, um because i'm disgusting yeah. i had i had this you guys ever get this where you walk too much and it's like it's like the the i don't know what the muscle is but you know there's like a crease in your groin area on either side of your groin that yeah. was hurting for like half of the day and yeah it was so just i had like, to massage like my, it. oh yeah <laughs> It felt like my legs were going to fall See, off. See, I, I don't that get that. My, crazy. like, if I walk, a, this didn't happen, but if I walk a lot, a lot, like on, like, uh, when I used to do gigs a lot, uh, my mm-hmm. ankles would start to burn um, oh, from yeah. that. But the only thing I got was, like, the the right side of my right foot, like, j- I just had a cramp in it. So for the next mm-hmm. two days, if I walked, like, for more than five minutes or something, it was just cramp city again. I was like, But Ugh. just to be clear, um, I had a watch on that was tracking us, and I believe we only walked about five miles. So we're just out of shape. We're not. Yeah. We're not American out of shape. We're like European out of shape. <laughs> I had you know? sixteen thousand steps. Yeah, it sounds about right. That's what. Yeah, I it was pretty good. It was a fun time. Um, yeah. So uh, uh, I expect that video in I think two weeks. I just checked the calendar, and I have a video yeah. on Monday which immediately reminded me that I have a video on Monday. So I need to start editing that uh, and doing that. Um, I'm just going to dive into what I've been playing because I figured I can get it out of the way. Uh, I defeated Ganon in the Breath of the Wild. Okay, this this is not to be mean, but um, my immediate reaction is like, who cares? Because I feel like that fight means nothing in that game. You know what I mean? I, it's it's like I it's like if somebody it's like if you ask somebody you're playing Breath of the Wild how far are you if they say they beat Ganon it's like oh so you're only like three hours in because that's you could do it like right away if you want to you know what I mean it's one of those things where yeah. it's like no tell me tell me everything about but the boss boss fight because the boss fight doesn't mean anything you so know I, it's I, weird how many I, seeds do you have how many shrines did you do <laughs> I, I yeah how many it. how many of the guardians have you gotten yeah I saved it well, for the did end and you did before guardians though, right. Don't no, you, you don't have to. No. You can go fight him. It only takes his health no, down. Really? Yeah. You can go straight to Ganon. And and oh. and you can survive that first. It's it's a little tough yeah. at the beginning because you don't have health, but you could do it. Yeah, you can <laughs> do it. Because uh, the only thing the beasts provide is taking his health down during the boss fight. Um, yeah. So I had never done it before, even on, when the last time I played it. So I did all four. So I, I put defeating Ganon as like the final thing I was going to do because... I was like, when I'm ready to be done with the game, I'll go and do that because it'll be something new and it'll be like a solidified ending to my journey in that game. Um, So I did start doing the Champions Ballad. I did all the first four of them in the plateau and then I did two of the Divine Beasts of it. But I, I just, they were not that they were repetitive, but... I was 50 hours into the game at this point and I was like, ah, I don't want to do more of these like trial sort of things. So... I went over to the castle, walked up, beat Ganon, 
then I didn't know anything about it, so I, I didn't know what happened. So I beat him, and then spoilers, there's like the second mode of him out on the field that you shoot the light arrows at defeated him there so the thing i didn't know i thought the game just continued after that which i found disappointing because it makes no. you reload your last save which was yeah i i usually don't like that in games because i feel like i've lost progress uh i would have preferred the japanese like... games <laughs> oh i know <laughs> uh, i don't know for me for me it's like it's kind of understandable because in order for them to do that right it means it would basically move into almost a second phase of the game where it's like, okay, now we're actually going to rebuild the world. Yeah, yeah you know? uh, but I'm and, okay with them being like, so, I'm okay with them being like, hey, you're just back in the world now, loaded in before Ganon. But I, there's something about loading, yeah. I have to go load the save to do that. I don't mm. like. You know what I mean? Yeah. I could see that. It's like even that's fair. It's like a Cyberpunk did the same thing. You had to reload the save versus there's other open world games that just put you in a state of the game that's before it, but yeah. you have beaten it in that world. So, but I, the big I, difference is with Cyberpunk by that point you awful. had zero desire to play that game yeah. anymore. <laughs> exactly. You know? So, um there's still more stuff back there. I, I might dive in a little bit uh, to check it out, but uh I like set up that definitive marker, so as soon as I did that, I was like yeah, I don't need to play this game anymore, um, which is good because I, I want to save all that pent up energy for Skyward Sword. No, I want to save all that pent up energy for Breath of the Wild too. Um, so I will get to that. But overall, great game. Uh, it has its flaws. I still think uh, I, I don't think any differently of it, but fantastic game. Uh, excited for number two. Uh, still runs like dog crap, uh, especially the Korok Forest. You load in there. Yeah, it's about oh, yeah. Like course, it's really seven bad. frames. Yeah. yeah, it's rough. Yeah. Um, moving on, uh, we had a rousing game of Super Mario Party Saturday night in which I won because of bullshit, um, which is how I win. Before Every we get Mario to that, Party, though, let's do you win. I'll just yeah. <laughs> Before we get to that, though, I'll just say that um, this is my first time playing Super Mario Party, the the new one for the Switch, um, oh. and. Honestly, it wasn't that bad. Um, I was a little disappointed that you have to use the Joy-Cons, and there's definitely some games that require motion, but I feel like it was about half and half as to whether the game was awful with the motion or not. And then there's also plenty of normal games where you're just turning it sideways and using it like a normal controller. And the board, I don't want to say they brought back the board, but it's not the stupid Wii, Wii U one where you're in a cart together. You know, so, so honestly, uh, my impressions of Super Mario Party not bad i feel like it's a turn in the right direction because they were going yeah. downhill for a while yeah and they have they have a co-op mode like the all being in the car called the river run that we didn't play um after game of thrones no uh so i, I haven't even touched that but um yeah okay. it was it was it's a good party game the, the only problem is i have four controllers i just don't have four joy cons so if i have people over yeah. I can't play Super mm -hmm. Mario Party, which is why I'm excited about the Mario Party All S Superstars, because that is a four of the best maps from the N64 games and all the mini games HD'd from the 64 games, and you can play them on the controller. Um, yeah. Joy, uh, yeah. What you calls it? Pro controller. Pro um, controller. Yeah. I understand why they made it Joy-Con only, but the Pro controller also has motion control so i don't know why they didn't make it so like it would just take out the really refined uh vibration hd rumble stuff out because there's certain ones that you couldn't do because of hd rumble so just remove yeah. those uh i think would have been a good answer but like even couldn't do as a stretch yeah, yeah. <laughs> um yeah that's a good idea though it's basically harder. yeah that's a good idea though it's basically like okay at the start of the game which controllers do people have? Okay, let's filter out some of the mini games you can't well, do. Because when you open up the game, it says select how many Joy Cons are you're connecting. So you could easily have been how many Joy Cons, how many Pro Controllers. Hey, you're stuck with only these mini games. Yes, I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, would have been fine. Uh, yeah. Overall, I think other than the nostalgia for I have for two, uh, I think it's probably the best Mario Party game. It's easy to play. It's on eight modern oh, consoles. Wow. Um, I mean, I probably would have a different opinion if I played every single one of them, but uh, if I have the chance, um, I'll go play two. But. 
Yeah, I don't know if this is the first one to do it, but they also have, you know, when you start a mini game, they're like, hey, here's what you need to do. And they give you a little description and the controls you need to press. But while that's going on, on the other side of the screen is literally just that mini game running and you have full control over your yeah. character. Yeah, that's good. And I really like that. That's, and that, that was like, because half the time I didn't even really need to read the text because I'm just like, oh, Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Okay. We're good to go. Yeah. They've been really good about that because even the N64 two, you can do all the controls with your character. You just, you have to hit a practice mode to go into that's limitations yeah. of the N64. So they, they've actually always been great about that sort of stuff. So I'm glad they're taking it to the full extent there. Um, yep. And finally, I have dove in back into Factorio uh just because ian was talking about how he's done with factorio and i mm -hmm. was like you know what i've never beaten factorio i haven't even gotten to fluids on my own before so wow we put this that high on the list and you never even finished the fucking... <laughs> um, I, I, that's valid that's valid <laughs> <laughs> so now i'm doing it all myself i've got this beautiful <sighs> beautiful main bus going uh stuff feeding in and out of it i set up a whole train network to go get some more oil i've been making sulfur daddy loves his sulfur um it's i'm kind of i've i've built it a little too small so now i'm trying to be like more broad about it but it has been so much fun figuring that stuff out uh on my own and also like i the last time we did that game, I don't know if I had just started a new job or you were on vacation, but you had like a lot more time in it. So that it was, yeah. it was what we talk about when we always play those types of games is one person not takes over, but it's like, it becomes one person's vision and the other people are helping them. Uh, Cause they, they, they put, they're putting more time into the game. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like Valheim and Minecraft usually Minecraft, especially escape that because people can have their own stuff uh terraria yep. was a huge one not that it's the perfect yeah. game in the world but you and zach turned on that hard because our second episode our third episode well, the game's not good the, so, the entire yeah. community had done everything already so like there wasn't much for anything wait, 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 Ian, did you it. say terraria isn't good yeah because he's Look, I'm stupid be, i'm gonna be completely clear about this this is a very subjective opinion i just don't like the controls and that it's side scrolling crafting i hate that play style control setup i hate that absolutely yeah i, I understand where you're coming from also i don't understand how people on controllers play that game i have to use a mouse it's like it's like Oh, it's like yeah, knowing you can play it better, but you're stuck with a controller. Is it's the worst yeah. thing ever. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, Factorio is great. I I keep playing it. I'll, I'll play it here, and then I'll like go work on the model, and then while glue and paint's drying, I'll come back over because I don't do anything right now. Uh, it's great. Uh, and finally, the fourth game on my list. I just quick shout out to uh, the Wheel of Time series i've been reading i'm on the first book got this at the strand for half price um it's so good i what did that I ring up as game. by the way this rang up as half of 10.99 which is uh a, a number it's let me, let me ask you this, David. it's very it's stupid <laughs> let me ask you a question david so let's say you go in a bookstore and it's they have new books but it's also a lot of used books and then you see a rack full of like old like 70s and 80s paperback books and the price and the the sign says half off are you expecting that to be half off the msrp on the back of those books yes unless there is a sticker on it that says otherwise i just i just feel like those books should be two dollars each not I, not 550 so it's, i it's would crazy. agree but i realized at least this this book that i bought for that isn't used it has not been read before like there's no creasing yeah. pages are still together like but they do, that's they do thing. buy used but yeah they do buy I, I will agree I, and again it's the strand yeah. it's one of the hoity-toity bookstores like there's a bookstore in morristown here that is the they write it on the inside of the cover it's a buck 50 for a for a used book yeah. no matter the condition mm -hmm. so that works out anyways uh great i i've been looking for a sort of pulpy fantasy book series to read through i didn't want to do game of thrones again and i didn't want to do anything else really and this book series is finished and it's 14 books and they're each like a thousand pages so 
daddy's going in and i just i'm just sitting on the couch i haven't sat on the couch and like read during the day in a while and i'm just like cooking through it it's great um that um that sounds like fun. That's, i've i've been doing that over the last couple of years where i'll be like oh the culture sci-fi series i've heard of good things about it there's eight books and then i just like over the course of a year and a half two years just get through the whole series um it's kind of nice doing that just kind of like sitting down and focusing on a series and just knocking yeah. them out one by one and really seeing the progression of it and it's nice like not to say it's not mainstream but it, i mean because it definitely is it's a hugely successful book series but it's cool to have like that knowledge of these characters now in the world and i actually looked it up because i could have sworn yeah. there was a tv show the amazon show is premiering sometime this year so that'll be interesting to sort of yeah. like read it before but that's it... that's the that's the knockoff one about the police force in the wheel of time universe is that the one i'm thinking of no it's the actual wheel of time books oh, okay i'm thinking yeah. of something else it might be is it the shinar stanara chronicles shinara chronicles i'm not sure okay anyways that's not a book i'm sorry um uh, moving on uh uh you know i'm just gonna make ian go next um folks do you guys remember full spectrum warrior for the xbox no Okay, fair enough. Uh, so Full Spectrum Warrior came out for the Xbox, I believe it was early 2000s. It was kind of this weird game where it was like a super, it was like trying, it was kind of like America's Army, where it was trying to be like a very realistic US military game, but it was tactics. Um, and so you're like controlling a squad of four people, like moving through an urban environment, and it's like semi-turn-based oh, in a way. Is this, is this like the Xbox equivalent to like SOCOM? Uh, yes and no, because SOCOM has a little bit more direct control. Um, hmm. but definitely in the same, like, like tone same. where it's okay. like, we're going to do realistic military. So I've always wanted to play this game. Um, I never got around to playing it. I actually bought it like five years ago on sale for the Xbox. Cause I knew it was backwards compatible. And I sat down the other day and I finally installed it and played it for like an hour and a half. Um, and it's, it's pretty cool. I'm not going to continue playing it cause it definitely has some some age on it um but it's just kind of interesting to see this weird mix of like super realism but then also this like turn-based real-time strategy type of thing where you're like controlling two squads and you're like i want you to move over here but you need to be facing this direction so that if an enemy pops up but it's not like arcadey where it's just like everybody's shooting like there's very clearly defined rules where it's like if you're behind cover you will not take damage ever you know mm -hmm. but you have to be facing the right direction you can flank them um but i just kind of wanted to bring it up are there any other games you guys have played where you you wanted to play the game you put it off for so long that by the time you got to it it's too out of date for you to enjoy it even though you felt like you would have enjoyed it 5 10 15 years earlier yeah there's a lot of uh crpgs i think i kind of wish yeah, i, I dove into that. more as a kid yeah so i'd kind of have that nostalgia um I was gonna, you know, just because David's here, I was gonna say Psychonauts. Um, I mean, that's fair. <laughs> only because I did jump into it like two weeks ago and I felt uh, a little lost and I felt the controls were a little dated. But I will say I spent like another half an hour, hour with it. And it, <clears throat> I think I was more used to it when a lot of other games fail at that because those controls aren't far off. But I will say yeah. it's similar to like going back to an old racing game where there's different buttons for go and stop than the normal set stuff now. Mm -hmm. And I've preached oh, this yeah. a lot that if you took a lot of older games and just modernized the controls, they would probably be better than a lot of AAA games today, but they're not like graphics and controls oh, because they would go that, that far but they would definitely be better. yeah because it, <laughs> yeah it's they have the systems and stuff down but it's just like archaic way to run it or something like that yeah i guess the two examples i have i didn't put either one down but definitely like could feel the age one is actually chrono trigger um oh i think i would have liked i already liked chrono trigger but i think i would have liked it a lot more if some of the mm -hmm. systems were the systems they used literally like one or two games later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like, I, I can see that they learned a bunch from making that game and then applied it to their later games for how they do like turns and combat. Uh, and like 
how the bars for other characters are still running even when you're going through a giant list of menus to figure out which thing you want to use <laughs> like the <laughs> yeah. time's still running um so that that's definitely one and the other one i think is more recent that i felt this for which was hyperlight drifter i just played that like a, less than a month ago i think mm -hmm. and i think that style of game has just gotten so much tighter on controls that Hyperlight Drifter already feels out of date, even though it's only a few years wow. old. Wow. Mm -hmm. Like after playing Hades, like Hyperlight Drifter didn't feel good to me because yeah. newer games of that style have nailed the mechanics so well that it just it felt wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about the I was thinking about the controls. I think the other thing that really prevents me from enjoying older games is a lot of quality of life stuff. You know, like a couple, mm -hmm. a couple, a couple weeks ago, I was talking about how what I really liked about Mass Effect one and two. Um, when I played them was that like, if you're doing a mission and they're like, Hey, go to this area and talk to this person. It's like, you go all the way through and you talk to that person and then they go great. And then they just immediately boot you back to like your ship. They're like, we know you're done with the mission. We're not going to make you run back through that and stuff <laughs> like that. And a lot of older games are just like, here's a really long tutorial with unskippable drill sergeant yelling at you. Or like, we're going to make you run through this empty area to get to this one thing to interact with it. And so I think a lot of those quality of life stuff just makes me want to put the controller down. Um, so yeah, I think the yeah. other lesson I'm taking from this is that there's a game I really want to try. I should really try to hop on it sooner rather than later, because if I put it off for 15, 16 years, like I did with Full Spectrum Warrior, <laughs> I'm less likely to enjoy it. That seems like uh, a bit of an extreme case, though. <laughs> yeah, Ian's really got to get to Pong, but he's just... He that's has a, a, that's a, a lot of years Honestly, in video games. You brought up Chrono Trigger. I've, I've never played it, and I, I do want to play it. So, it, you know, that's an even further back example of something that I need to hop on. I still need to finish um, it. So the the other game I've been playing, I actually I played about 90 minutes of it today is Red Dead Online. Will, I know you've played Red Dead Online, is that right? Yeah. David, you haven't? I, I haven't. I haven't. I don't even know the game, so no. OK, OK. Do you have any uh, opinions on Red Dead 2? Never played it. No opinion. OK, you don't have to play it. Um, <laughs> Will and I, I have feel, slightly. I feel like I need to play it to have an opinion on the game. <laughs> No, no, I just mean don't wor don't worry about it because for uh -oh. me, Red Dead 2 was kind of a disappointment. Um, and because of that, I kind of avoided Red Dead Online. Uh, but honestly, the other thing is I don't think Grand Theft Online, Grand I don't think... GTA Online. GTA Online. GTA on I don't think it's very good. <laughs> it's got like, it's got like huge problems in it <laughs> where it's just like, here's a seven minute load screen. Here's all these weird little menus you have to interact with just to hit a mode. Here's a yeah, bunch of assholes GTA running around online. shooting you. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like, okay, so I want that, but they're going to take away the modern guns and cars, which at least in my mind is not going to be as good unless it's a refined experience. And it's probably not going to be because it's the same creators as GTA online. But I was listening to a little podcast called the fire escape cast with Mike oh, Mahardy, Mary Kish and Dan Reichert. <laughs> and uh, Mike Mahardy gave like the best pitch possible. I could think I'd, I'd heard of for the game for Red Dead Online specifically, which is that Red Dead Redemption 2 is GTA rock star story missions where like there's a huge open world, but and you can kind of run around in it but you, ha you don't have any of the tools, you don't have any of the cash, and in order to get those things, you have to go through the story missions, which are very linear, and they're kind of boring. It's like, hey, go over here. All right, now mm -hmm. steal this car and go over here. And so a lot of Red Dead 2 was that, and it felt like they were just not giving you enough opportunity or room or tools to play in this, this beautiful sandbox they made. And so Mike Mahardy was talking about how Red Dead Online now has been fleshed out into this thing where it's like, you can be a bounty hunter, you can be an herbalist, you can, you know, uh, be a trader, you can be a horse thief. There's all these different things you can do. And you're literally creating your own character because it's an online game and you're trying to earn money in different ways. And yeah, there's bad monetization, but they're finally giving you the tools to play in this sandbox. Um, and that was enough of a pitch for me to boot it up and play like the first <laughs> 60 to 90 minutes. And I just, what, what are you laughing at? It's it's the, the worst. He's a he's a liar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a I want to hear. I'm gonna pause here. I want to hear. I want to hear you then. I get it. Listen, I uh, my experience with GTA Online and Red Dead Online is because I like to play games with my two brothers, 
and we mm -hmm. especially in gta online we would do a private server and then like try to get 18 wheelers to the top of the mountain or try to yeah. like we would do top gear challenges we called them so anyways um my problem with red dead online is yes you can be any one of those things for 15 dollars all of those they go on sale regularly and you can earn the money in game i don't know if my i should check steam how many hours i have on that game i don't even know if i've earned enough money to do it but each of those roles costs money you have to buy a license for it so you can't just i mean you can go hunt animals but then you can't necessarily sell them to the guy who will give you the most money because you aren't one of those people or you can't go do bounty well, hunter missions and all that well, sort of stuff be, to be fair it's it costs an in-game currency that takes forever to earn with free play or that you can go out and purchase with real money yes and the game is free uh, it wasn't initially but it is now free no it's i don't think it's free now it is red dead online is not free it's separated but it's not free oh it's oh so you still have to buy red dead 2 to get you, red dead online is it five no you could I think it, I think it's normally twenty. It's on sale right now for ten because of the Steam sale. When they okay. first split it off of Red Dead Two, it was five. It was five dollars. Yeah, but that was a short period, so, so if it you is not a free. Play Red Dead Two, you don't get Red Dead Online. No, you do. You, you do. do. Okay. Okay. So but they're now, either bundled or you can get it separate for ten. For slash yeah, I have twenty-two hours in yeah. that game, and I did not have enough money yet to buy anything. Yeah. So I like that's that's the thing is that I just got out of the tutorial missions, and. I don't know. I, I, I think part of it is not enough time has passed since Red Dead 2 for me to view this world and system as like something brand new. And the other thing is I'm already starting to see some of those boundaries where it's like, oh, you got to throw some money at this to really open up possibilities of what you can do. Um, the other thing is, OK, so I'm playing. I played Red Dead 2 on an Xbox One X. I actually bought an Xbox One X for Red Dead 2, which was a great purchase. Ooh. Well, let me, let me, okay, side, little side quest. Here's what happened, right? So Red Dead 2 was coming out. I knew I was going to play it. I have an Xbox One. And Digital Foundry did the review, and they're basically like, it doesn't play great on the Xbox One. It barely plays better on the PS4, but it looks phenomenal on the One X, like performance and graphic fidelity mm -hmm. and all that. And I was like, I don't want to spend $500 on a One X. And then GameStop had this deal where they were like, hey, if you trade in your Xbox One, and give us $300, we will give you an Xbox One X and Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> and I was like, you're going to, for $260 off? Yeah, I'll buy a brand new <laughs> spanking console for that. It was, it was insane. <laughs> um, so, so I played on console, and, and it plays really well on console. It looks phenomenal, and it's great on the controller. It's not good on the PC. And even though it looks better... Mouse and keyboard controls are not good. Like, like for example, to whistle your horse is the H button, and then to open your bag is the B button. And uh, then there's H like a horse and B. For <laughs> bag. I know. Put into that one. And then the log <laughs> is like the L button. Like, if you remember on the controller for Red Dead Two, it was still a little wonky because certain buttons were doing like double, triple duty, but you could kind of get used to it. So but now, now they've just they spread it across the whole keyboard. They literally were just like, "Yo, what's the first letter in that thing?" that's the key for it <laughs> yeah and it doesn't feel good and it still has like it does like the cinematic the cinematic movement in a third person game where it's not just like boom boom it's like a little bit of a swimmy feel to it yeah. which is good on a controller especially for a cinematic game like this it feels like dog shit on a mouse it's not I good believe that. um so it's it, but the problem is i don't want to shoot using a controller so it's like <laughs> it's like i mean what's I don't think any of Rockstar's games have ever really had good controls on PC. That's not a thing they do. Yeah, like like Grand Theft Auto Five and Grand Theft Auto Online on the PC. I literally have a controller when I'm driving. I use the controller and then I switch to the mouse <laughs> for shooting. And when I yeah. want to do drive by shootings, I use both at the same time because, <laughs> like, it's it's just and so so that's the problem is that like this is a console game. This is 100% a console game. And yes, it looks better on PC, but it but it feels worse. And the problem is I can't play it on my console because even though I have a physical copy of Red Dead Redemption 2, it was literally the first thing I packed when I started packing for my move the other day. And I'm just not, I don't want to rip open the box just to grab it. So long story short, Red Dead Online, uh, surprise, surprise, folks, I finally played it and I was 100% right. It's not great. It's amazing. It sucks. It's awful.
<laughs> that's a bit of an exaggeration. That's but pretty good I'm with friends fan. if your goal is to have fun. <laughs> You know, I, I will say, just to close this out, I did have a mission, and it was just, like, do matchmaking, and I was like, okay, and I had this other random guy with me, and it's literally the first, like, multiplayer mission you can do in the game, and you can tell that both of us didn't know how to control a horse, because we both got on our horses, and then he accidentally jumped from his horse onto my horse, and then <laughs> fell off. So I circled around and came back, and we're going, and then we get to the place, and I accidentally cut in front of him, and he just T-bones my horse and goes flying. <laughs> it was... So I could absolutely see it being fun with friends. We, it's just not not a great game to dig into <laughs> seriously. Um, Zach and I would try to test the limits of the jumping to horse. So you would like <laughs> try to time it where you were hitting it at the last second. So you would be far enough away where it just like glitch flew your character to land on the <laughs> other horse. And it was incredible. Um, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, it was a good David, time. what have you been playing? I've been playing some games. So first one, Scarlet Nexus. Have either of you heard of this game? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. This game surprised me with how good it was. Um, so it's a Bandai game. It's from some of the original Tales of creators. Uh, they spun off because they were kind of sick of doing Tales and decided to make an, a different game that is also very much like Tales. Um, and let me tell you, the combat in this game is fantastic. It's a little rough at like the early levels before you unlock a couple quality of life things that shouldn't be unlocked. They should you should just have those abilities, but it's a JRPG. This is what they do. Um, <laughs> but like once you get those, combat is super fluid. Essentially, th this is some of the best combat I've seen for being like a character with AI teammates. Mm -hmm. um, oh, wow. It the way they interact with your character is fantastic. So the way it works is you're controlling a main character. You pick one of two stories uh, and they both basically they're different for the first nine of 12 chapters. And then the last three chapters are the same for each character. Uh, and the teammates you get are different along the way too, but every teammate and you have different psychic abilities. So your psychic ability is uh, psychokinesis. You can pick stuff up, chuck it at things. It's great it's effortless in combat and you just have a gauge separate from your health that controls how often you can do it. Okay. Um, and there's a ton of stuff in the environment you can throw. There's special things you can throw that then have quick time events where you have to do different things to add extra damage. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're pretty fun. I, I enjoy it. Uh, the teammates where they come in is as the game progresses and as your bond with your teammate gets stronger by giving them presents, talking to them, doing little side missions and stuff like that with them. Uh, you get more things you can activate with your teammate. And basically, there's like a latent power you can activate. So some of them have like electrokinesis, which means you have lightning powers. Uh, one is pyrokinesis. One is oh. uh, sclerokinesis, which like hardens your skin so you take less damage. Oh, like scale. Uh, yeah. But they have like, there's, I think, eight uh, possible teammates. And each one has a different power that all work completely differently. And basically, you can activate them in combat to work for a while. Well, they'll, they'll make your attacks do fire damage that can catch your enemy on fire. Uh, they'll reduce the damage you take. You'll teleport around instead of running. You can turn invisible. ton of different things. Uh, very easy. Just R1 on a PlayStation controller and a face button. Bam, you're using their power for a set period of time. Nice. As you get uh, better bonds with them, it adds more powers onto it. So like when you hit L1 and the face button... Uh, you'll do a little combo with them that'll eat up part of their gauge. Mm. Um, and they'll, their bonds with you, as they get better, their powers last longer, they get more powerful. Uh, and then eventually you get the whole crew with you and you have two different <laughs> sections. You can use all eight different powers like at, almost at the same time. Uh, it is awesome. I really enjoy it. Uh, well, I say eight at the same time. I think you can do max three at once. Um, but the powers also combo really well together. Like You can turn invisible and then activate... Uh, like the electrokinesis guy, and then you can sneak up on someone, stun them with a shock while doing extra damage for backstab. Or uh, there's one where you can uh, teleport to your target, so you can like buff up yourself, teleport to the target, and just whack them and, and catch them on a wow. wow. It's very cool. Like combat is very cool in this. Uh, story, some of the most anime crap I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it's an anime game. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, there is an anime that is starting 
for the show uh, <laughs> that has like a tie-in. I think you can get rewards by typing in codes from the show or something, but I haven't tried that <gasps> yet because I'm pretty much done with the game. Code uh, show. But like, it, it, the combat is great. The story I'm enjoying. I know a lot of reviewers do not like it. And if you don't watch anime, it might come as, as weird, uh, especially mm-hmm. because there are two separate stories. So there's a male and female protagonist who have completely, they're completely different characters, completely different stories. Uh, And if you do just one route, there are some things you get like partial information about, but not enough to like make some connections. So really to get Mm -hmm. the full, full understanding, you do have to play both routes, Uh, but you can just play one and you'll have a solid enough understanding of the main plot. Uh, That's awesome. There's definitely some nuance. Um, which characters you get stronger bonds with depends on which character you choose at the beginning too. So like you learn more about some of the side characters. Yeah. Um, and I guess for people playing, I thought playing the female protagonist first is probably the better way to go, just because she's easier to use and her fights are a little easier than the melee guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, okay. So she's got some range. She's melee uh, is basically the the key difference. So as as far as the combat. It's not like a JRPG where they're in combat with you. You're using their powers while you're so fighting. There can also be up to two teammates with you who will gotcha. fight and like draw fire and stuff like that. But yeah, you can activate their power when they're on the field or when they're not on the field. Okay. There's cool. there's story reasons as to why basically all your minds are connected. It's this weird like I think they call it brain punk. <gasps> Open it's your like mind. cyberpunky. It's a bit cyberpunky and like your brains are all connected through this like system because you're like an elite fighting force basically and uh it's cool i really enjoyed it i would 100 percent recommend it especially because i don't think there's a lot coming out in the next like month i think august is when stuff hits so skyward sword yeah a game that's already been out (laughs) (laughs) uh so like if you're not playing skyward sword i would 100 percent recommend this if you have any interest in jrpgs at all and it's not turn-based so it's it's more open to people. The combat system is very similar to like a Final Fantasy VII remake uh, or a recent Tales game in that it's it's actiony and there's moments where you can spend some time to like cast a spell or use a power and whatnot. Gotcha. gotcha. But Wait. great time, great game. Uh, I also played Mario Golf Super Rush, and let me tell you, as someone who has never played a Mario Golf game in my life. The single player mode is trash, <laughs> utter trash garbage. It is a long as hell tutorial. No, Man. it is a Man. very long tutorial that you have to play if you want to unlock any courses, basically. Oh, no. Uh, so you got to play it. And then randomly at like the last 15% of the campaign or whatever, there's mm-hmm. suddenly plot. <laughs> Oh my god. Bowser's taking all the golf balls. I was I was looking forward to this game, but I'm so glad that Me I too. backed off right before reviews came out. Uh, yeah. yeah, single player, utter garbage. Um however, multiplayer, very fun. Very fun multiplayer. Speed golf is great. I like uh I played with I think just Zack and Pridge earlier this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did stream over on, on save data and we were having a very good time. Uh, speed golf is fun. Everyone has like different power. Like each character has different powers, different specs, and everything. Uh, you're running around kind of Mario karting each other, so you're trying to screw over your your friends as you're trying to get to your golf balls and everything. And that that was actually a lot of fun. So if you're gonna play a lot of the multiplayer, sure, pick it up. If you're not gonna play multiplayer, skip it. Yes, just, just skip gotcha. this one. <laughs> Also, pick it uh, up on last... sale if you're going to only play multiplayer. It's a Nintendo game. But it's not... It's not... Do, do the sports ones go on sale? Because it's not... Not really. Not, deep, not really. It's not deep Nintendo. Yeah. They might go on sale for like 10, like 10 or 20 off of the 60, but yeah. not... They're not going to... Not like, not like uh, Mario and Rabbids. But it is Camelot, so I, I thought maybe it would get... Uh, but it's, it's still a Nintendo it's game, still Nintendo. though. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Nintendo's still the publisher, so... They control that. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and uh, yeah, prices aren't going to go down too much. So if you're really into the multiplayer, pick it up. If you're like, eh, on playing multiplayer, maybe there'll be a sale. But yeah, yeah that's that's really it. 
Uh, the last game I played, I didn't play too much of it, so I won't talk about it very long, was Vampire the Masquerade Blood Hunt. Uh, so I don't know if either of you have played Vampire the Masquerade, the tabletop game. No, uh, I have not. It's have one of the books. Uh, World of where? Darkness, yeah. Um, so this game is heavily based. It's it's a battle royale based on a modern uh, Vampire the Masquerade timeline. So there's skyscrapers, guns. Uh, it's modern vampires. And <sighs> it does some cool things. And it does some other stuff that I'm pretty mad on. Um, so in the game, there are actually NPCs, which is different for most BR games. Um, yeah. There are a lot of NPCs that have no powers whatsoever, and they're literally just there for you to feed on. And if oh, someone else... Terrifying. Well, you're a vampire, so like you, you feed on their blood, and if you get spotted by like a civilian, you get marked on the map. So other vampires can see you, because the people are like, oh god, there's a vampire, he's eating a person. Can you ask permission um, to, to eat them? <laughs> Excuse me, no, it's, it, it is not consensual. <laughs> <laughs> it is non consensual blood. Get your fetish out of here, Will. I, I wish there was like one guy who was like a diehard vampire fan. It's like, please feed on me. Like, it'll be great. Oh, I mean, tell them where you are. <laughs> there are those in the tabletop game, technically. Um, and oh, then great. there's so there's other civilians that don't fight you, but they have like a special aura if you look at them that buffs one of your abilities if you feed from them and then mm -hmm. there is a third set of npcs that are guarding like high tier loot that have guns and armor oh. and like can hurt you and stuff um so i thought that stuff was cool it definitely added some strategy of like do you want to risk going for some of the high tier loot because as soon as the npcs start shooting everyone near you knows where you are um it's got a lot of verticality to it because the all the vampires can just basically free climb buildings. Um, nice. So there's a lot of verticality, which is good and bad. Uh, and then you also pick a vampire bloodline, and each bloodline has different powers, mm -hmm. which are gonna need some balancing from what I was playing. <laughs> so there are some that are really good for team play, and some that are utter garbage for solo and vice versa. So like I played a more of a support one in some solo games where I could like heal myself and I got to like the last three when the, the ring was coming in and there was another vampire that basically had force push. He just pushed me off a fucking skyscraper into the smoke <laughs> and I died. <laughs> As, and I was like winning the firefight and I was like, well, that's a crappy way to die. <laughs> like yeah. for the very last part of the game. Cool. Wish Oof. I had that power at that time. So yeah, I think, I think if I play this game and that, that, that's sort of a big if it's battle royale that that space is very full right now if i play this when it comes out to like an actual beta or full release because this is closed alpha um i would definitely probably be skipping or uh skipping single player and skip it and uh sticking to like a squad game if i can get other people to play with me i I'm, this is one i'm going to play alone just because the powers yeah. are do not seem balanced for single play they seem balanced for squad play um but it was cool it was honestly a lot better than i thought so well, there's that if you like the vampire setting or you're interested in more battle royale that do some fun cool new things uh check it out once it hits beta awesome wait yeah I, that was the was that the one shown at one of the e3 things yeah it was an e3 thing and i was like oh i really like the setting i'll see what this game is about so i signed up for the alpha and got in so that's awesome cool uh, sweet. Awesome. That is all the games we have been playing this week. So that means it's only time for one thing, which is the news. Here's the news. We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? That man. Sick today. Moving on oh, that was to... Me. I just sang it live on the show. Oh, right. It was you. Sorry. It yeah, was Jesus, it was everybody. <laughs> it was a little baby Jesus. Um, time I'm for the anything but little. <laughs> but you're so small on my screen. Um, you keep saying you're tall. I just don't believe you because I've only ever I'm seen six you... Three. <laughs> I've only ever seen you here. You're tiny. You might not even have legs. 
Um, True, don't have legs. He was Darth Mauled as a child. Uh, news, well, we're half, news, <laughs> news. <laughs> huh, sorry. I was just looking at the news um, to get, see what's starting. Uh, I am going to start this off with uh, the biggest news of the week, I would say, is that Nintendo has announced a new Switch, the Sw- Nintendo Switch OLED model. Uh, oh, just OLED. call it OLED like a sane person. Uh, excuse me, <laughs> I pronounce. But you have to, you have to pronounce the parentheses though. Oh, parentheses. How do you pronounce parentheses? Parentheses uh, like that, like I know, that. I know you say open close. I was making a joke, like you would say it like a character. Anyways, the Nintendo Switch OLED model coming out October eighth, twenty twenty one. For three hundred and fifty doll hairs, if you're wondering what it improves, it's got a seven-inch OLED screen. It's got a wide adjustable stand because not like anyone complained about the previous stand. It's got like a deeper angle for the stand. It's its own separate little bullet point here. And folks, <laughs> I'm not making fun of this as much as other people, but it's got a built-in LAN port which is great because there's nothing like a hardwired no, collection for your modern consoles. The dock has a built-in. Yes, list. the dock has a built-in, yeah. um, which it I'm also, okay with. Didn't, didn't they also improve the speakers on the thing too? Yes, uh, yes, improved yes. speakers. I'm still and a 64, 64 gigabytes, gigabytes of internal memory. I was still scrolling originally, on the Nintendo webpage. <laughs> originally it was 32, right? It was originally yeah. 32, yeah. Okay. Um, um, exciting. But not enough, in this my is, opinion. Uh, this is for some people that uh, I am not one of those people. I just, I just want to. Okay, look, I understand people are disappointed, but here's the thing: they should not be mad at Nintendo because Nintendo never said that they were making a Switch Two. They never even said they're making a Switch One Point Five. That is all these stupid leakers out there who are running with rumors. And uh, I don't want to say like reckless or careless journalists who are just like, yes, I too have heard rumors of a new Switch hardware model. And that inadvertently confirms and encourages all these people who don't have information to then start say, it supports 4K. It's got a 12 inch screen and come up with all these stupid wow. tech specs that are not supported. 12 inch screen. This is, this is basically just, uh, you know, this is them. They're switching out the screen. And while they're doing that, they're making some quality of life improvements at the same time. It's 50 bucks more than the normal one for the newer, brighter screen. And that's pretty much it. It's not even a 1.5. It's like a 1.1. Well, they already came up with a 1.1 with this the improved 1. battery 2. life. <laughs> it's 1.2. So it's, but the other thing is the other Switch is like, what, four years old now since yeah. launch? It's, yeah. it's, it's getting up there. So like I have, a, I have a launch Switch. It's still running fine. Uh, I have performance concerns that won't be addressed by this model, but my switch is also, it's starting to, uh, the fan bearings are getting a little noisy. So if I can trade it in and get this new one for 150 bucks, it's like, yeah, why not? You know, so it's, it's, it's for some people, it's probably going to replace the normal switch and just become the straight up Nintendo switch OLED model and the Nintendo switch Lite. And so I think you shouldn't be mad at Nintendo for announcing this, but I will say they do need to fix some performance in the future. They, yeah. they, they should have a, a backup model somewhere. Listen, it's Nintendo. If you think they're not going to make like seven different models yeah. of the Switch like they did the 3DS, you're fooling yourself. Like, yeah. You're an utter fool if you don't think they're going to keep chugging out models for another few years. And exactly. I wouldn't be shocked if there still was a Switch Pro and it's next year. Like, yeah. yeah. Wouldn't yeah, be shocked. And I'm not mad at Nintendo at all. I was like, I knew there was going to be some sort of revision thing this year. They, uh, like, it was rumored enough that something would actually come out. I, I, I it's one change of the OLED screen, like, major change, isn't enough mm-hmm. for me to buy a yeah. new one or trade in some sort of thing. I'm going to wait until if there yeah. inevitably there is another Nintendo Switch or there's another Nintendo console. Um, like, that's not a big enough trade in for me, but in no way was when they announced it, I was peachy king happy with it i'm like mm-hmm. hey that's great you're you're listening to people about like widening out that screen adding the land port fixing they're like clearly fixing issues other than joy con drift yeah. and um <laughs> they're gonna try to make things better so like again that's the other thing there were six different 3ds's a billion different uh not six different 3ds's six different ds's right 
No, 3DS. You were right. I thought it was was it six or seven? It was six. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's plenty of time for revision. Uh, Plus, Mm. they just went through the world. Just went through almost a year and continued of shortages of chips and all sorts of things. So there could even have been a bigger plan that they just went with this one and only announced this one because they knew production stuff. There's so many reasons why another switch couldn't happen, but I'm delighted with this. If I didn't own a switch already, I would be happy and just dive into this one because the screen looks great. If you're buying this switch for the first time, get this. If you have a like launch model switch and you play it mostly in handheld mode and your battery is like kind of done. It This might be the one to get yeah, unless yeah. you're going to wait for the hopes of a pro next year. But if yeah. you're not planning to get a pro anyway, just get this get exactly. the OLED yeah. screen, get the better battery from the 1.1 model, get the better processor from the 1.1 model, get, get the kickstand. Like this is fine. Yep. Yeah. And I got the animal crossing one last year and Again, I play most of my Switch on the TV anyways, so none of this really applies yeah, to same, me. Same here. So it's just like, this isn't for me because I usually yeah, use the I dock. I cannot... So. I can't do handheld for that long. It hurts my hands. Because I am... Oh, you need, you need to get a grip. Yeah, I need to... I should 3D print a grip thing. Um, Moving on from the Nintendo Switch OLED onto the Nintendo Switch... Let... No. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> anything either of you want to tackle here I, it's a slow news week folks uh i wasn't sure if there's anything nothing really jumps out at me in the news that i that is on this page I mean, we can go um, with the sunny state of play stuff but even that wasn't i haven't watched that yet because i was busy up until three minutes before this podcast yes. <laughs> dare you it's not a lot not yeah. a lot honestly uh i'll talk about the assassin's creed stuff because i yeah i do like those games um well, most of them. Uh, so a story has come out where there is essentially a new Assassin's Creed project codename Infinity that is a live service Assassin's Creed game uh, that involves both Ubisoft, I think it's Montreal and Quebec, uh, I believe those were the two studios. And essentially this is just turning AC into what should surprise probably no one uh, with the way Ubisoft does thing into games as a service. They've been doing it for the past few Assassin's Creed games where they have the first release and then they release two or three different smaller ish DLCs that all cost a chunk of change where you can buy a season pass. Um, this is not shocking, but do I want it? No, no, I don't. <laughs> well, I don't so if this. I, if I may play devil's advocate as somebody who has played one and a half assassin's creed games and is not really a fan of the series i i think assassin's creed strong suit has been that it hops between times and settings but i think what it started to get into lately in a bad way is basically dropping like 100 hour games you know origins was like 40 50 hours odyssey 80 to 100 valhalla is supposed to be around 100 as well and so what i kind of like about this is that um Again, this is pie in the sky dream. If they do it right, I, I could see this as they're putting out, you know, a 20 hour experience in this time frame setting. Now they're going to put out a 20 hour experience in this completely different time frame and setting. And, and I think that would be cool if it was it, almost in like a life is strange type of way where you have like an episodic story, but they're mm-hmm. dropping it in chunks and they're drastically changing the setting as opposed to uh, every year you get a mediocre Assassin's Creed in a new setting that is way too long and stuffed to the gills with random stuff because they want to justify the $60 cost. Yeah. Or every two years you get a $100 game which has twice as much useless stuff in it. You know, my, my hope is that with this, they can focus down into smaller games and therefore refine it better and release it slightly more often and jump around a little bit more. But again, I, that's assuming they do it right. And I don't know yeah. that they will. I was going to say, I my thing with this is I don't have a lot of faith in Ubisoft right now because that criticism has been there since Origins of this game has too much stuff in it and this game is too long and there's a lot of things that don't matter are empty and they've only bloated it more and more yeah. each time with that criticism being put out there. Okay. Um, so like I and like even the most recent game Valhalla because I liked Odyssey a lot. Um, Valhalla didn't connect with the characters and 
it was i didn't enjoy that one as much um the setting didn't feel as good the characters didn't feel as good um and with a game as a service model like if they can't keep bringing people back with cool settings and that's going to also put a ton of work on the dev teams because like they have to make if they are doing it the quote unquote right way, which is to have smaller experiences and new settings each time, that is a lot of work because you've yeah. got to make entirely new assets for these settings that you're going to. Um, yeah. And I feel like I would be doing a disservice not to mention that a lot of criticism has been going around Ubisoft internally and externally in the past couple of years for uh, working their people too hard, uh, toxic environments, toxic managers, and from the sound of it, most of those people were not removed from power. They're still there. Um, there's yeah. a lot of people internally that have left because of this project. that are like, nah, I'm good. Like one Assassin's Creed every couple of years is good enough. I don't need to do one a uh, like couple months or whatever <laughs> they're planning on releasing yeah. this content cadence. Uh, they're like, I don't really want to crunch more. No, thank you. So. I don't have a lot of faith in Ubisoft as a company to pull this off. And especially I, I would be shocked if they didn't try to put in some multiplayer crap, yeah. which I personally don't think has ever gone great in an Assassin's Creed game. Um, just, it just hasn't. None of them have been good in my opinion. And depending on what they do, it's going to be hard. It, this is a very hard thing. And from, some of the stories they have tried this before internally and never had a product that they were happy with enough to like continue and go to shipping. Uh, so man, I yeah. hope for the devs, especially that they're able to pull this off and make something that's good and palatable and isn't a hundred hour experience. But also I feel like it has to be a hundred hour experience for it to be a game as a service. That's kind of part of the territory. Yeah. So like, so they're There's very good at be bloat. bloat. So. so they're just going to make bloat the service, which I honestly, like, I'm good. <laughs> I'm okay. I don't uh, need that. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see <laughs> honestly, exactly Ghost what. Tsushima, best Assassin's Creed game to come out in years, in my opinion. So. Oh, yeah. A little bloat. Um, yeah. I mean, Ghost like, Tsushima I, had that much, but yeah. <laughs> I had, I have Valhalla sitting on my, I bought it a couple weeks ago and it's sitting on my hard drive and I keep meaning to start it. And then I'm like, everyone says it's so long. Should I even get into it? Like, I want to eventually because I think the setting sounds cool and I like Vikings and I enjoy those Assassin's Creed games, but I'm like, I stare at it all the time thinking like, is it is it time to dive into this? Um, but I think it, I think part of it is not not to say this is your stance as well, but part of it is like, is it time to dive into this mediocre ass game for 100 hours? Yeah. yeah. You know, so, yeah. And who knows, they fixed some stuff with it probably since I played it last year, but like I certainly didn't enjoy Valhalla that much last year. There were a lot of bugs and issues and again, not connecting with the characters or the story and it's many plot holes. So maybe they patched some of that stuff out, but I don't know. Yeah, like Vikings never existed, so why are they? Yeah, everywhere? and women were never Vikings either. So <laughs> Yeah, it's disgusting. Are women even real? Tonight, They're we not. find out. It's Impossible. just like squirrels. They've all got everybody's got two nuts. Oh my all god. Right. <laughs> <laughs> two nuts in them. Hey, uh, moving on. Oh my god. <laughs> we are... <laughs> Let's talk about Grand Theft Auto 6. There were a lot of details that leaked and then they were uh semi confirmed by a bunch of uh professional journalists basically coming out and say all of this lines up with what I've heard. I'm gonna go through some details real quick. Do it. Um, it will take place. In a modern Vice City, it's aiming for a release in 2024 or 2025. Um, it's going to be moderately sized, so don't expect it to be enormous. The location, as in the physical map, will be changing and expanding with new areas after release, similar to Fortnite's game map, where the, the game map is constantly evolving and there's big events. These things change and a meteor hits, stuff like that. So they're hoping to do something similar. There's going to be the multi-protagonist system, including one who is female, which will be a first for the Grand Theft Auto franchise. Are you guys excited about this? No. Eh, I'll play more GCA, but I'm not... I, I mean like ch champing champing at the bit for it yeah. it depends i 
don't have a ton of faith in the writers of GTA to write a female protagonist um, based on the writing in the past. That's a good point. Um, so that's one cautious thing. The other is if they're making an expanding world, it's the game is now GTA Online, which I did not enjoy. And I do not want to play. I want. I like single player GTA. Have fun messing around in the sandbox and doing the campaign and stuff. Um, yeah. So if it's gonna be expanding and not a essentially done game at release, I don't care anymore. Like I'm, yeah. I'm not interested. This will be the first yeah. GTA I miss since three. If yeah. that's the case. <laughs> yeah. So just to go back to what I was talking about with Red Dead Redemption Two, I I've kind of lost faith between Grand Theft Auto Five, which I thought was good but it had some issues and then Red Dead Redemption 2, which was basically like the same mission gameplay structure, which then felt dated at that point. I think between those two, I, I I'm just not sure they're going to make exciting, compelling missions. The missions will feel good. You know, maybe there'll be one or two of them that are cool, but I don't think they're going to be very open or inventive for the player. And David, like you're saying, those games have never particularly controlled extremely well. Yeah. So it's like it's not like they put out a game and it was like it's really good but there's some issues with it it's like they keep putting out the same issues over and over again and they're slowly improving on them but they're not really getting better you know like gta 5 controls better than gta 4 but it still doesn't control great yeah and red dead redemption 2 controls better than gta 5 but it still doesn't control great so it's like i guess gta 6 is going to control a little bit better and the missions are going to be a little bit better and the story is going to be a little bit better and sure i'll play in that sandbox but i don't think this is a surefire hit you know i was gonna say with one of the towser brothers being gone if he was the one writing a lot of the good story the story might not be better we'll see (laughs) yeah yeah but also like uh, if they if like with gta 5 and red dead redemption 2 what brought me to, and one what brought me to those was hey here's a 40 hour game you can sit down and play it once maybe in a couple of years you'll play it again uh single player here you go like if they can do that i'm all there for it every time i like i don't care if i mean if like we're six games down the line the writing's awful i won't buy that seventh but <clears throat> if they're like hey here's this 40 hour game but you gotta play it over six months as we slowly release new characters and maps and everything i'm not going to be there for that because what well, yeah there's there's a reason people have stopped doing the telltale slash life is strange release model um that's because people hate it yeah so yeah. please don't do that and i think <laughs> i mean yeah. contrary i not this is a little aside but i think the only video game it ever worked for was hitman because when Hitman 1 released episodically, it forced you to continue to playing on the same map and doing mastery stuff if you wanted to until the next map came out, which yeah. now feels like you have too many options when the whole game comes out, which is fine. Yeah. It's it's not it's not a negative or a positive, really. But I, I only noticed that benefit from one. I was going to say it's it's a different audience, too, because yeah. like for Hitman, uh, I think, honestly, until probably the most recent Hitman 3, um, hitman has released to the hitman audience so you are gonna come back and probably play the extra episodes like they weren't i don't think they were adding a significant number of new players until all of the episodes were out and then they did sales or whatever to bring in new players uh and i think that was like that i didn't play life is strange until literally this year or last year i think because it was in episodes and i was like no i Mm -hmm. if i'm gonna buy this game i i just want to play through it especially if they're only like two hour episodes or whatever like i just want to buy it when it's done yeah and then i ended up waiting until this year when the game is cheaper and i would have paid full price if it released (laughs) life is strange you're not gonna between episodes of life is strange you're not gonna sit there and keep replaying that like a hitman map but yeah it's the same thing it was towards that audience this and to be fair this game is gonna sell bonkers it doesn't matter like, yeah gta yeah. 6 is gonna sell fantastically no matter what they do it could be a flaming pile of crap at day one people would still buy the hell out of it uh and it really sounds like with the way they're talking about it they're planning strictly for online and it doesn't sound like they care about the single player anymore which given how much money they made on gta online i'm not shocked by <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just just as a counterpoint to you guys' completely understandable pessimism, I, I do want to say that I think that Grand Theft Auto Line, why it was such a disappointment to me, is because it is like the perfect 
space. It's the perfect sandbox for what they were trying to obtain. You know, you create your own character. And in this world, you start with nothing and you have all these different criminal paths. You can do all these different things to, to earn your money, to make your stake, to buy real estate, to turn the real estate into money. It's just that half those systems, most of the systems weren't there in the first place. And by the time they added them, they had so many quality of life issues that it never felt good, you know, and it's plagued with monetization, et cetera. But I, my hope is that with GTA 6, they fix all those issues. Because even from the little bit I've played with Red Dead Online, it's better than, than Grand Theft Auto Online already. So I, I feel like they have, a, they have a good base. They're still a great studio. And maybe third time's the charm where they can actually take what is a great premise and a great base system of Grand Theft Auto and actually make it the online experience yeah. that you want to play. And you know, I do also just want to point out that like, we are not in the majority on this opinion. <laughs> GTA 5, I just looked it up, has sold 145 million copies. We are in the minority on this one, fella. <laughs> well, well, so just to be clear, I, I, I don't know about that because I, 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 I guarantee you a lot of people don't like GTA Online. Um, a lot of people don't, but I I still think yeah. out of but, GTA players, we're probably in the minority. I, I still yeah, think it's but, I think it's the, the same thing as is that, uh, it's it's Mario Kart. It's Mario Kart. If you buy a new console and you're some side of and you're you're any sort of normal video game player and not like seasoned critics like us who are very particular about what we're buying and are in the know, you're gonna be like, I got a PS5. Oh, well, I, I want to play GTA on it. Oh, I got a PS4. I want to play GTA on it. I got I finally got an Xbox One. I want to play GTA on it. You know, so that's three finally GTA. <laughs> exactly. It. Yeah. That, that's part of it is that people just want to, it's, it's like a Mario Kart. You, you get a console. I can finally play GTA, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so I think, I think that's part of it. I, I, cause I don't think GTA online is as nearly popular as you would think it would be. Like, it's not like League of Legends popular. I bet it's steam numbers. Aren't that crazy. No, it's not League of Legends. I, I think it's just either, a dedicated it's not free to play fans. either which is I, and i also think another, yeah people who play gta online probably still complain about it just as much they just continue to play yes. it because it's the game they play it's the same reason some people play the same madden every year hoping it'll get better but they get it anyways because they want to play the new madden it's like karen yeah. is really yeah. into multiplayer games she complains about dead by daylight all the time but i will always every night they're playing it having a blast but I mean, there's still things to complain about because it's the game you play. So I feel like those people have the same complaints. They just still play it a lot yeah. because it's the game they yeah. play with their friends. But I, yeah, I just I feel totally like it agree. was important for context of like everyone loves this game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Totally. And I do, I do truly think that even if critically GTA Six is not liked, and if like we don't like it, it's still going to do fantastically, and the majority of yeah. people will still like the game. I mean, just. For context, GTA so GTA Five as of uh, I forget the date, but uh, 145 million copies came out in 2013. The GTA Four sold 25 million, so it has like wow six times to their <laughs> next best selling GTA. Game. It's also and to be clear, it is if I'm not mistaken, I believe it's in the top ten of the monthly NPD, like all the time. every single yeah. month, every single month. For years and years and years, it is constantly selling copies the, every single the day. The only game that has sold more is Minecraft. The only game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, great. Nice spirited conversation about GTA 6. I'm excited for that. Uh, moving on, I was going to go straight to close out here on the Sony State of Play summary. Is that okay with y'all? I mean, we could just skip it. There really wasn't anything. Uh, They're making a Moss 2. Deathloop's yeah. still coming oh. out. Tribes Moss of Midgard. Uh, Tribes of Midgard looks interesting. It's also it, it, not only coming to PS4 and PS5. Um, <laughs> a lot of these games, it's always games. confusing. Uh, well, are they also coming to PC and it's just console exclusive, I'm assuming? Uh, it is Tribes of Midgard is coming to PC and Xbox. Okay, that's weird that they yeah. don't ever. <laughs> um, they did have a bunch of Stranding Directors cut which we're not going to talk about because there's a whole separate show, the quarantining, that stupid information. No, Death um, Stranding director's cut. They announced a lot of cool things. I will tell no, you. No, they didn't. It's um, stupid. It was awesome. Have I used my F-bomb yet? Can I use one? Yeah, you can use one. Well, fuck off. Death Stranding's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to the subpixel rating system. It's a good uh, game. 
Subpixel rating system. Will, would you like to read off the list? Yes, just let me pull it up because I don't have it open. Oh, I should also pull it up. Uh, let me know if you need a link. I can... uh, no, I, I have it. <laughs> Props to Google Drive. They tell you what <laughs> stuff has been shared with you, so it's very <laughs> easy to find that stuff. Sounded so depressed. Yeah, I have it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> oh, God. Here, let me change uh, the thing so people at home can see it. Oh boy. Okay, let me read this list. Number one, Outer Wilds. Number two, Yakuza 0. Number three, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Number four, Titanfall 2. Number five, oh, Factorio. <laughs> Number six, Doom 1993. N Number seven, Original Animal Crossing. Number eight, Half Life. Number nine, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Number 10, Red Dead Redemption. 11, Firewatch. 12, Mirror's Edge. 13, Ghost of Tsushima. 14 Control, 15 Kerbal Space Program, 16 Mass Effect 2, 17 Cuphead, 18 Prey, 19 Shadow of the Colossus, 20 Star Wars Battlefront 2004, 21 Mario Tennis, 22 Grand Theft Auto 5, 23 Horizon Zero Dawn, 24 Battlefield 1943, 25 Middle Dash Earth, colon Shadow of Mordor, 26 The Outer Worlds, 27 Gone Home, 28 Halo 4, 29 Fallout 4, 30 No Man's Sky, 31 DayZ, 32 Donkey Kong 64, 33 Brink, 34 Kingdom Hearts 3, 35 Cyberpunk 27, 2077, and the worst game according to us here at Subpixel, number 36, Big Rigs Over the Road Racing. Oh, I missed that. I gotta go back and watch that episode wherever that was on. It's <laughs> a bad one. <laughs> I missed that I, one. Uh... I felt like we were bullying Cyberpunk a lot and it only like 99% deserved it. I was like, there are worse games like Big Rigs Over the Red Road <laughs> Racing. Um, David, I'm going to start with you. If you uh, have I a need game, a minute because I was going to say Breath of the Wild since you Oof. just finished it. And Oof. then I realized it was I, already on the You list. know what? So. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to message you my idea because I actually already had a game, but I came up with something pretty good. So. Oh, no. Oh. What has he done? Is it not on the list already? Oh, it's not. Oh, oh no. baby, <laughs> let's do, let's do it. Let's chase Kojima all the way to no, Death Stranding. <laughs> yes. No. yes. How dare you? Yes. Okay. How is this not on the list? Because I've avoided David, it. For... I need to know your experience with Death Stranding, if any. It had. I played through the whole game. Uh. Oh wow. It had a middle period that I liked, and I hated the rest. <laughs> I played, I think I played four hours, and then I was done. Well, I was done. You, you don't need to leave that space at the top. You can, you can undo that. <laughs> um, I just like getting a feel for it. Uh, you know, listen. before we do before we dogpile, maybe we should let Will uh, talk, because I you're outnumbered here deliberately. This is an ambush. <laughs> Listen, listen, listen. Uh, to be fair, I probably would have gotten there. I was filtering my list of games that I've played, and I was filtering by my three, four, five, and sixes, and Death Stranding would have been in there. So oh, perfect. perfect. <laughs> listen, everyone knows I like Death Stranding. It's 50% playing it up because I like a game no one else likes, and it's 50% I genuinely like this game. I know the story is terrible. I know a lot of aspects of the game are terrible, but me personally, Will Crosby, enjoy the gameplay loop. I enjoy the world. I enjoy playing the game. And that is all I'm going to say about that. I think it does a very good job. And I just want people to know that I genuinely enjoy that game. I know it is a solid five, four out of 10. It's not the best Lord. game in the world, uh, but I have had a blast with that game. And I know it was 2020, right? What did that? Oh, 2019. Yeah, I gave that a four. <laughs> um, David, David, I want to hear your thoughts yeah. on the game. Uh, listen, Death Stranding, I sort of said it earlier. The beginning is very bad. Um, it's the be the beginning is bad because it's a Kojima game. So they present a lot of information that you do not understand very quickly. Uh, your walking simulation is really bad until you get some upgrades later. Uh, generally, beginning game unpleasant. There's a middle period of the game where I agree with Will. There's a fantastic gameplay loop 
that for whatever reason delivering packages in an apocalypse is actually really enjoyable really liked that middle part and then you go to the mountains and boy that is some of the worst gameplay and bad story that i have played in recent times and the only thing that's keeping that game above like a two on my rating scale is that middle five to ten hours that were actually <laughs> fun <laughs> yeah i i think for me i so i i was actually very surprised when i started the game there's a there's like a series of opening cutscenes, and i was actually really drawn into it um you know, I wasn't really sure what was going on, but but Kojima does he does some really good cutscenes. You know, it not even necessarily that he's giving you usable information, but just in the way that it's presented, you're pulled in, you're intrigued right away, you're interested. You're like, what's going the on? The man's a good cinematographer. I I definitely yeah. give Kojima that. Yeah. But then then the gameplay loop, I don't want to say the full loop kicks in because, like you said, you're you don't really have much at the beginning, but it's exactly exactly like you said, it's a walking simulator. Like you're in these really nice looking vistas that are very empty that you have to walk slowly through and you're just kind of walking. And then every now and then you have like a combat encounter with human enemies, which doesn't feel great. And then you have these floating baby thingies. And then you're just like, I guess it's turned into like a poorly telegraphed stealth game where you're just like, well, I guess I got to tiptoe a little bit and do a little of this or that. And it was just like four or five hours after that, and it was like, I only did like three or four delivery missions. And then it was just like, I guess I'm just going to be doing this for a while until maybe I get some things that make me feel better. And like, like God bless him for building that game so quickly. It's beautiful. It runs great as a PC port and on console. And it's got some, you know, it's a Kojima game. It, it, yeah. it should have been a duct tape game, but it's a Kojima game. But man. I, I will oh. give one other thing credit that I forgot to give. The way that they integrate quote-unquote online interactions is actually yeah. very good in that game uh, yeah, i will very give, cool it is very cool i haven't seen other games really accomplish build something like that together and build stuff together very cool that part was legitimately very cool uh, i really enjoyed that also the naming in that game no <laughs> the <laughs> other thing is a strand or a bridge yeah uh die hard Man things or whatever yeah Mama. No. oh my goodness i will say there's David. also some good moments of like music also the music's fantastic in that game yeah. um but the, yeah. some of those music problems. cues were very good so the music is good i have issues that it won an award when he basically just licensed a whole album oh, yeah. and shoved it in the game yes but, yes but the uh, music is good yeah if especially i don't know what the award was for but if it was like award for best music it was Ward for best music. No, see, I would do by like best. Uh, what is that called? Remix or uh, how does the track. Grammys put it? Uh, like uh, compilation. Is that what it is? Any compilation? Yeah, yeah, like I would give an award for that because that that those low roar, roar songs are incredible. But yeah, but yeah. it is just one album. <laughs> yes, for yeah. the most part. Um. So where would you put this on the list, David? Personally, I would put this. Uh, uh, I would toss it up either before or after No Man's Sky. Yeah, I, I was looking right around there as well. I, I would put it... <laughs> Will is offended. <laughs> uh, man, I, I don't... I, okay, Will, I, I, for me, I'm struggling like Death Stranding versus No Man's Sky. I need to process that a little bit. So, Will, where <laughs> would you put it? I would put it below battlefield 1943 now see here's here's the problem i have with that is that middle of earth shadow of mordor is like a functioning functioning decent game with a great gimmick that puts it ahead death stranding is like a mostly you know broken what? game i would put know. it below fallout 4 above no man's sky because all the games above no man's sky i enjoyed and finished death That's stranding i did enjoy it enough to complete the game which is more than i played no man's sky but i did not like it any more than any other games on the list yeah and, and so i that, feel that's I feel, where i would put it yeah and i feel like death stranding is is much more of a cohesive vision even with its flaws than no man's sky which feels like they just made a framework and they keep throwing content at it 
without actually getting getting anything cohesive or mechanically working together. Whereas Death Stranding, uh, I haven't played No Man's Sky since launch, so my interpretations are from launch. Don't worry, you don't have to. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people disagree with you, but yeah, yeah. But okay, so so I don't want to just slam it there, but will that means that it's the difference between us and you is Middle Earth, Shadow of Wardor. Metal Mortar, Outer Worlds, Gone Home, Halo 4, and Fallout 4, which you're saying are worse than Death Stranding, we're saying are better than Death Stranding. Yeah, I think... I, mean, I could see it above Fallout Stranding, 4. I think Death Stranding's better than Halo 4. I don't know. I don't have any feelings on Halo 4. I don't anymore, think so. Halo 4 is a very good game. Well, but I feel like Halo 4, it's not a very good game, but it's not a very bad game. It's 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 like a five out of ten on our new rating system. There is nothing awful about it, but there's nothing amazing about it. Whereas I feel like Death Stranding has a little bit too much awful in it. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I think Halo 4 has more awful in it. But what's awful about Halo 4? I just I, I don't like. I don't think Halo 4 has a very good storyline. Or well-made missions, not as, as certainly not living up to the previous three games, four games. Um, and but I, I wouldn't say awful though. I would just say like mediocre. You know? Yeah. Anyway. So I don't have super feelings for really anything from Gone Home all the way to Fallout Four. If you put it above Outer Worlds, I'll be mad. If it's below Outer Worlds, I will be okay. I so would I settle off. below Outer Worlds. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I didn't play Con Home or Halo 4. I think Fallout 4 is better than you listed it, so eh. <laughs> that's just me, though. I think yeah, Fallout I'm fine 4 is that. better than Halo 4. But that's just where yeah, it I'm is. Yeah, I'm with you there. So below yeah. Okay, worlds? so it's new number 27. I'm good with yeah. that. Um, while you're doing that, I'll, I'll intro my game. We need to talk about Watch Dogs Legion. Um, <sighs> ooh, a one I did not play. I... I played this. I was excited to buy this because last year I played Assassin's Creed Origins and it kind of got me back in my open world kick. And I then I played Ghost of Tsushima and even though I didn't really like it that much, it's I'm still like, yeah, give me some open world games. Watch Dogs Legion. Um, you know, Watch Dogs 1 was kind of a disappointment, but an interesting concept. I didn't play it. Watch Dogs 2 I didn't play, but a lot of people said that it was actually a surprisingly good open world game. And Watch Dogs 3 looked like that, plus the crazy interesting gimmick of there is no central protagonist. You are literally just recruiting people off the street and then swapping between them and literally like procedurally generated skills and stats and bonuses for each of them. And I was thought, hey, that sounds great. Give me an open world game, body swapping, recruiting, building an army. And so I bought it and I played it. And I think I stopped after about five hours because Watch Dogs Legion had that gimmick which was cool but everything else about it it was too much of a triple a game and what i mean by that was instead of letting you play with this gimmick in this sandbox they were so concerned about we got to do all these tutorial missions first we got to get you like a cool home hub for you to go to and we got to have all this style on top and we got to have some sort of story and we got to have all these like useless cool things and you're like oh look you could climb on a construction drone and they put so much effort into that that it's like it's like a one note thing instead of actually adding mechanical depth to it. And so it, it also didn't look that good. It, it had this thing where, you know, it's in London. It's oh, not that London is <laughs> it's not that <laughs> London isn't a big city, but London is not a city of a vista. Like a lot it's it's old world roads. So there's not a lot of long straight roads. <laughs> So I would literally be like on a road that's like, let's say 300 meters long. And I would, as I'm driving, I'm seeing cars pop in and out at the end of the road. And it's not that far. And, and mm. I'm playing this on an Xbox One X and it had that as well as on, on an Xbox Series X. And it had this weird thing where like the I level of detail. I did pretty bad on that when it came out, yeah. Yeah, like, like the frame rate was fine, but it was just very noticeable yeah. graphical issues where they were like dialing stuff down. And I just got to say, it was just a complete bust. I mean, honestly, for me, I think it goes all the way down. Does it beat Brink? It does beat Brink. <laughs> I think it beats Donkey Kong 64. I think it goes number 33 below Daisy. Oh, Daisy. 
And here's why. Daisy is is a game that f- had an incredible promise but failed to deliver on it, but still like ushered in something new. And Watch Dogs Legion feels like it has a slightly interesting promise that completely squanders and fails on it. And it's not as new as what Daisy was bringing with survival multiplayer, etc. I um, have like no feelings on this game, so I'm pretty okay yeah, with that. Uh, totally but let me posit this. You. What yeah. if we put it at below Donkey Kong 64 because it doesn't contain bananas? Oh, no, sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. It does, I, I meant to say, it goes below Donkey Kong 64. Because Donkey oh, Kong 64. We're good. Yeah, yeah we're it. great. <laughs> yeah. Donkey Kong 64, it may not be a great game, but it is at least a game with some stuff going on, whereas yeah, Watch Dogs Legion came on a just yellow feels cart. like a triple A mess. Yeah. <laughs> You need that um, memory module for it. Yeah. Uh, oh, I get. It's the reason I got one. Thank you, Donkey Kong sixty four. Um, <laughs> I should I pick a good game or a bad game? I feel well, like we have two kind of not great games, so you should pick a good one. Is how I. But it, it, here's my question: Is where are we at? We're saying the most middling game of all time is Shadow of Colossus or Star Wars Battlefront two thousand four. Those are five out of tens. That doesn't sound I, right. I hate this system already. I so. think I think I think we need another bad game. Okay. Got a pad at least <laughs> a game below Star Wars Battlefront because I think we're padded too too much at the top. Next time I'm on, I'll bring some far worse games. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like racking my brain trying to find some. I know. Oh, you know what? No. Oh. Here we go. Ghost Recon Wildlands. Oh. <laughs> I feel like it's it's time to Is rag on Ubisoft. No, it's um, the, people it's the drug lord one. Yeah, I thought people liked that. And no, Breakpoint was the one it's people a, hated. They're both bad games. Breakpoint is infinitely bad. worse. I will say that much. Ghost Recon Wildlands is so bad that my two brothers, who don't play video games that much, one really doesn't play video games that much, uh, who both of them oh, we have in the chat had saying a, it's close to your bedtime yeah well he's <laughs> close to his bedtime too um these two brothers are the ones i played these aren't the other two brothers these are the two brothers that i played with uh gta 5 red dead redemption Wait, sorry, we have four brothers no i was making a joke oh, okay. um <laughs> they i will, didn't get it they will play dog shit uh with me but neither of them enjoyed ghost recon Re- recon ghost recon ghost recon, ghost recon. <laughs> wildlands it is a game made for a one person to play and have ai compatriots so they can literally destroy the world uh i think i was just jeff gershman put it he would just he would play it single player have the other guys line up and then he would tell them all to shoot and every single time they would one two down and then the third guy would go baby makes three every single time he killed the third oh, person no. oh, yeah. <laughs> just to be clear him insane. this is the game no. this is the game where you have your ai teammates and you're like looking at an enemy and you can be like shoot these guys yeah and then they all shoot them and if you have humans yeah. with you they're just in those roles so you go from single player op to having yeah. two other people with you and you are getting annihilated if you get the police called on you like it goes from one star to 18 stars and there's like guys in tactical suits showing up murdering you because this game can't handle it 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 was not enough to grab our attention for any amount of time um it was ubisoft's attempt at an open world game that wasn't an assassin's creed game and they tried to apply a different genre to that formula and they've done it twice now and i don't think they've been successful either time uh yeah with that so i think this is oof while you're thinking about that i'll just does it beat brink the universal (laughs) question (laughs) um i played 10 minutes of this game and the reason why is i had just gotten a brand new graphics card a brand new gtx 1080 and I had a good CPU and I was like, let's throw some games at it. So I threw like Forza Horizon 3 at it and I maxed it out and it was running great. And I'm like, great. 
And then I had, it was either like a trial or something for Ghost Recon Wildlands. And I put it on. I was like, let's play this game. And it chunked really, really bad. It was like poorly optimized. I could barely play it. I played like 15 minutes of it. I got through like two firefights and I had exactly what you had, Will, which was just like, oh, I guess the AI, the AI just kills everybody for me. This is kind of lame. And it, and it just, they have like vehicles you can drive. Feels awful. It, this is just not a good game. Not a good yeah, game. and they built it as a third person Far Cry, and it was not that. Uh, it was no. a Far Cry from that. I'll say that much. Um, <laughs> I think this game is better than Brink, just because it's a full game that you could legitimately spend forty to fifty hours in. I'm gonna say mostly because of recency bias. I would think Watch Dogs Legion is a better game. Um, from the yeah. sound of it from you too I, I yeah think. i think i would if someone game. gave me a choice i would probably rather pay for and then play Watch Dogs legion than install would you rather Recon play Wildlands. brink i would always rather play brink if it, we were doing that <laughs> it would be on the top of the list <laughs> um, <laughs> so i'm well, gonna put I'm it is to be yeah. number 35 okay with everyone i i like that Okay. So below Watch Dogs Legion, above Brink. Yeah. I, I have picked my game for next time and highlighted it in my spreadsheet. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Too bad you're Perfect. never coming back on this show. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> feel exact. Chris will have to follow you this time. <laughs> Bastard. Um, folks, we did it. We made it to the end of the show. I thought this was gonna show was going to end early today certainly did not let me play the closing music here <laughs> folks daddy's tired i'm very tired um, it's also extremely hot in here uh this room gets way too hot uh, i'm hoping that doesn't mean it's gonna get freezing cold in the winter but i don't mind the cold that much so we'll see yeah. what happens um folks this has been local chat joining me today was the one and only ian gibson and also david from save data thank you gentlemen for joining me if you would like to see any of our content from Subpixel, you can go to subpixelfilms.com. That'll bring you straight to our YouTube channel where you can check all of it out. Uh, if you want to see more of me, you can find me on Twitter at Hunt270. If you want to see more of the amazing Ian Gibson, you can find him on Twitter at Think Gibson. And you can find more of David's stuff uh, at twitter.com slash save data team. Also, save data or team. Save data team everywhere. On everything YouTube, on YouTube. Twitter, all that jazz. Uh, they yeah. do a week great around the monitor that I steal most of our news stories from uh, they didn't do it this week so I had to scramble um, what else uh, Saturday what are we doing Saturday Ian Roblox with friends that's yeah. right we're coming back I'm excited for that <laughs> I like Roblox. Maybe I should play with you. No, I won't. I like watching better. <laughs> this is getting weird. <laughs> Monday, hopefully there'll be it a new... It wasn't weird until you said that. <laughs> hopefully Monday there's a new RimWorld video. Uh, I gotta record some stuff and put that together. Uh, and I'm a lazy bastard, so we'll see how that goes. Folks, thank you for tuning in, and we will see you all next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.